What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Captain's Corner, your place for all NFL draft content on Guilty as Charged. Um, my name is Alex Katzen, as you guys probably know. Um, we are back to do uh, some more draft content. Um, we've been doing stuff during the season, did a couple episodes uh, after the season wrapped up, kind of pre-free agency. Um, and then since then, we've been kind of uh, waiting to see how free agency has been, uh, has going to play out and everything like that um, over the last couple of weeks um, before we kind of get right back into draft stuff. And we have uh, now reached that point. Obviously the Chargers roster looks very different um, and very different than a lot of people thought it was going to look uh, this time two weeks ago. Um, and so I thought what better time to do a mock draft. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to do a seven round Chargers mock draft on the PFF simulator. Uh, they've made some updates. Uh, to make it a little bit more realistic-ish. Um, still a couple things that uh, I personally disagree with, but <laughs> um, that's the nature of all of these simulators. Um, and we're going to go through seven rounds, kind of talk about how free agency has affected um, what I kind of expect the Chargers' plans to be uh, at each of those spots um, and go through and uh, try to pick some players to uh, help the Chargers win games in 2024. Um, before we do that, make sure you guys, of course, do all the YouTube stuff, subscribe to the channel, uh, follow me on Twitter at Alex Katz in the same way you see it spelled on the screen there. Uh, do all that good stuff uh, with draft season kind of ramping up. This is like my prime time on Twitter. Um, obviously, I'm covering all the charges for agent moves and everything like that. Uh, you guys have been showing a ton of love to uh, all that stuff that I've been covering. So I appreciate you guys for that. Uh, but if you're not over there, uh, head over there. Uh, a lot of a lot more good stuff coming uh, down the pipe uh, these next couple of months. Um, we just, uh, over at Chargers Wire, just submitted our credentials for the NFL draft in Detroit. Um, so as long as all goes well, uh, me as well as Gavino will be out there for that week. Um, so we're really excited about that. We're excited to get you guys out, uh, some good content uh, live on the ground there. Um, so make sure you are tapped in for all of that. But without further ado, we will uh, pull up the simulator here. Um, of course, we're going to pick for the Chargers. We're going to do seven rounds. Um, PFF did introduce this slider here uh, a little while ago uh, for the public versus PFF board. We're going to slide that all the way over to public to try to get it a little bit closer to uh, what I think is the correct quote unquote draft board. Obviously, there's no real uh, being right or wrong, as has been a uh, major discourse point uh, today, uh, especially as it relates to one Benjamin Solak. Um, but if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, uh, God bless you. Uh, I wish that I could be like you. Um, but for those of you that don't know, do know what I'm talking about, um, I'm sure you will get that joke. So anyway, we will uh, go ahead and get started. Um, uh, we are not going to trade up, so let's go ahead and start. Um, okay. So, uh, number one, Drake may, uh, number two, Caleb Williams, Malik neighbors goes at three and Marvin Harrison at four. Um, so this kind of sets up nicely for, uh, what my plan was anyway, which is that, uh, we're going to trade down from this pick. Um, and are the Vikings interested in the pick? No, they're not. Well, that's wrong. Uh, they should be. So we're going to try to offer um, 11, 23, and next year's third rounder for pick number five. It says they're not interested. They're probably going to decline this. Um, obviously, in this situation, right, like Jaden Daniels will be on the board at five, um, which is already uh, kind of wild. Um, and so the Vikings probably should be a lot more interested. The reason why they're not, I assume, is because Jaden Daniels actually does not show up until 22nd overall on this board. Um, even though with the setting set to pub the public board, he does go a lot higher because of that ADP of 6.3 that you see there. Um, but because he's ranked this low and because JJ McCarthy is even lower at 28, um, the CPU is not interested in making that trade. Um, however, we are going to, for the purposes of content, go ahead and force this trade through. This has been kind of the framework of the compensation that I've been working on, um, uh, working with rather, uh, for a trade down with Minnesota, um, which would be obviously the 11th overall pick, which is theirs, the 23rd overall pick that they got from Houston in that trade that they made earlier this week, um, and a future pick of some sort. Um, I think obviously quarterback tax and all that, you're probably looking at, uh, potentially a third first round pick. Um, maybe you want to add another pick in this year's draft instead of deferring it to next year. Um, but we'll go with the third rounder next year since they don't have their second rounder. Um, and we will go ahead and force that trade through so that we can move on. 
uh, and let's see what they do. They decide to take Joe Alt, which is incredible. Uh, Romo Dunze goes at seven. Brock Bowers goes at nine. Olufashinu goes at 10 with Quinion Mitchell, uh, the lone defensive, or not the lone defensive player, Byron Murphy at six up there. Um, but now we're down at pick number 11. Um, the, th- the top three receivers are off the board. Obviously, we saw Neighbors and Harrison go 3-4, um, which kind of aids our decision to trade out of five there. Odunze goes at seven. Brock Bowers goes at nine. And so we're out of pass catching options. And I know that that's going to upset a lot of people that don't want to miss out on one of those top guys. Uh, I completely understand. I think that there are a lot of scenarios where the Cardinals are the ones to trade out of this pick and Harrison falls to five. And the Chargers probably in that case, in my opinion, should just stay and take him at that pick. Now, I will say that I think the trade, the trading team and the Marvin Harrison team are going to be the like two sides of the same coin, right? As in like if the Cardinals trade out, the Chargers are the Marvin Harrison team. If the Cardinals don't trade out and they're the Marvin Harrison team, then the Chargers are the trade out team. Um, One of those two teams, like those are the two teams where the pick is available. Um, Obviously, we think that Chicago is going Caleb Williams at one. Uh, Drake May and Jaden Daniels are kind of still battling for that two, three spot. I do still think it's going to be Drake May at two. And then it doesn't seem like New England wants to move very hard. I know there's been reports about New England wanting to move out. There's been a lot of speculation. But everything from New England seems to suggest that they want to stay and pick a quarterback there. I do expect QB3 to come off the board at that pick. And then that's kind of when the draft starts. And whichever one of these teams trades out of that pick is going to be trading for, you know, uh, whoever wants to select J.J. McCarthy. And then the other team that isn't trading out is going to be selecting Marvin Harrison Jr. But at the 11th overall pick, with the receivers gone, with Brock Bowers gone, our two top tackles are gone as well. I don't think that the moves that the Chargers have made this free agency really point to them selecting an offensive lineman this high in the draft. Um, Obviously, um, there's been a lot of reporting about Joe Alt, um, some of that my own. And we have talked about a lot about like, oh, well, maybe that's a smokescreen. And I think that like the pivot off of that, a lot of people are going to say like, oh, yeah, so it was a smokescreen. And while I think that's a completely fine conclusion to draw, I do also think that it's not fully correct. (laughs) Um, I do think that that probably was their plan going into free agency. I think that the Chargers probably thought that they would be able to get Keenan Allen to take that pay cut that he reportedly declined. Um, but of course, Allen set a franchise record in receptions. He had arguably his best season of his career. Like he's not going to be super amenable to taking a pay cut. And so you have to kind of pivot, uh, and go in a new direction. But with that said, again, top receivers are off the board here. Tackles are kind of like the, the best position on the board along with corners. I do think that in this scenario with the, the receivers off the board and everything else going on, I do think that Terion Arnold is going to be someone to watch for the Chargers. Alabama's Pro Day is tomorrow, as I'm recording this, today as you're watching it. I think it's going to be very important to see who the Chargers send to that workout. Uh, defensive coordinator Jesse Minter and national scout James McPherson, who has been my uh, favorite person to stalk on Twitter this month, um, were at Clemson's Pro Day watching Nate Wiggins. Uh, I do think they're doing work on this cornerback class. And if you look at the corners that they have on the roster and you look at their lack of activity in, at corner in free agency, um, as of recording this video, Christian Fulton is not yet signed with the Chargers. I do think that corner is going to be one of their first two picks. Um, there's also been some reports um, from the combine from when I was there in February that the Chargers really, really like Arnold. Um, and really like his tape, what he put together in Indianapolis, working on um, what was reportedly an injury. Um, And so I do think that he would be their preference here as of right now. Obviously, that could change with with pro day attendance tomorrow and everything else like that. But I think for right now, I am going to take Arnold as CB2 off the board here with Mitchell going at eight um, and add a day one starter at corner uh, alongside Asante Samuel Jr. Moving through the rest of the draft here, uh, J.J. McCarthy goes at 12, uh, Fuoga at 13, Jaden Daniels 14, Cooper DeGene, J.C. Latham, Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, Marius Mims. A lot of edge rushers, a lot of tackles. Uh, Johnny Newton also going at 21 to the Dolphins here. 
Um, and that leaves us at 23. Um, Jackson Powers Johnson is still here. I know a lot of people will be uh, stoked about the possibility of that one. I am going to try to keep things a little bit real, more realistic for what I kind of expect uh, to be available. Um, Powers Johnson, it's starting to seem like could be available around like the 23 range. I'm still not convinced that he won't go top 20. Um, and you guys kind of know about him already. You guys know the whole deal. You guys are uh, rabid about him. And I totally understand why. Um, but for the purposes of the mock draft, I think that we'll probably skip over him um, just to talk about some other guys and uh, get familiar with some other players. Um, Graham Barton is here. He's another guy that can play center. Um, but I think we're going to be looking at wide receiver here. Um, Brian Thomas is on the board. A.D. Mitchell is on the board here as well. Um, again, with the way that the Chargers have moved in free agency so far, you look at the depth chart at wide receiver, and you have Quinton Johnston, Josh Palmer, Darius Davis, and Simi Fajoko in some order. Um, the order is not really that important because that's not a very good wide receiver core. Um, obviously Mike Williams gets released. He signs with the jets this morning. Keenan Allen gets traded to Chicago. We're all very sad. Um, but I do think that that kind of signifies that the chargers are going to take at least one, if not probably two wide receivers in this draft. And one of those is going to have to be a high pick because they're going to be expected to contribute immediately. Um, obviously Josh Palmer is going to be a starter for this team as he has been kind of in that wide receiver three role, um, in previous years where he's kind of ended up wide receiver two because of injuries to Allen and Williams. Um, you're of course hoping that Quentin Johnson takes a step forward. Um, Darius Davis is a nice kind of gadget player. Simi Fajoko is, you know, nice depth, but you're not really expecting like a ton out of those two guys necessarily. So you need someone that can come in and be like a wide receiver one type. Um, now. The discussion there then becomes Brian Thomas Jr. has never been a number one type. He was the number two at LSU behind Malik Neighbors, who we just saw go at number three in this simulation. A.D. Mitchell has been a number one type, and he profiles as a number one type at the next level. So does Thomas, but Mitchell has the experience doing it. I will tell you that uh, at the Combine, I did speak with a member of LSU's personnel staff um, who said that he loves Brian Thomas Jr. He thinks that he is potentially better than Malik Neighbors, which I understand is a lofty, lofty statement. Um, but his quotes about him were that he does not know how good he is yet. Um, and so it really just comes down to, do you want a player like that, um, which I understand some hesitation about, like, you know, not taking a sure thing, taking someone that might be seen as a little bit more of a project and everything. Or do you want a guy like A.D. Mitchell, whose main drawback has been concentration stuff like uh you know he takes a lot of plays off that you can see on his film during at, at texas um and so like that's kind of the the decision that you have to make with yourself i am going to go thomas here um i think that he is a perfect fit for um what the chargers want to do um i think he is a little bit more of a of a speed guy and so in that sense you could you know you can kind of talk yourself into like oh well that seems like the opposite of what the chargers want to do but i think that what they're going to want to do is clear out some space for guys like quentin johnston hayden hurst that sort of archetype to like work over the middle um, and Thomas kind of provides that sort of clear out speed where you can still get some deep shots um, with Justin Herbert uh, dialed up there. So I am going to go in that direction. All right, moving down to 37. <clears throat> Tyler Newbin still here, Peyton Wilson, Zach Frazier still here, as is Kool-Aid McKinstry. Um, but the target that I was looking for is still here, and that is Florida State defensive tackle Braden Fiske. Um, or Fisk. I don't actually remember which one it is right now, um, but he is some of the Chargers have been showing a ton of interest in. Um, he has a top 30 visit set up that was reported by uh, Justin Mello over at the Draft Network uh, either yesterday or today. Um, he has that visit coming up with them. Kind of fits Jesse Minner's archetype as a uh, at, like super athlete on the interior, can play anywhere from one to five tech really, but probably fits best as a three tech. Um, and the chargers don't really have a ton of options there right now. Um, obviously they signed Puna Ford, who's going to play three out to five tech kind of like, uh, they have Morgan Fox who's going to play five tech. They have a Tito Abonia who's going to, 
I guess, play nose tackle. Um, but like behind that, there's not a lot. Um, obviously, we think that Jim Harbaugh is going to want to beef up the interior. Jesse Minner is going to you know, want to do all of that. I think the defensive tackle makes a lot of sense here. Um, obviously, we've been talking about names like Chris Jenkins here at this spot, um, You know, some players like that. I think that Fiske, um is going to be someone to keep an eye on in this process because it's someone that they've shown interest in. And uh, in this first year of the Harbaugh and Hortiz regime, it's kind of a nice – uh, litmus test for whether or not like a top 30 visit or a visit to a pro day or like, you know, any of this sort of stuff like is, is a sign. Um, and so I think because of the recent reports and everything linking him there, I am going to take him. Um, I do know, obviously people are going to want to go Zach Frazier again, kind of the same thing with powers Johnson. You guys know everything about him already. You guys are clamoring for him. Um, and so we're going to talk about some guys a little bit later down the board, especially with that signing of Bradley Bozeman. Moving down to the third round, pick number 69, Jalen McMillan is still here, Junior Colson here, uh, Tez Walker, Bernie Dorlis, Devondre Sweat, Blake Corum is here if I want to uh, get Alex Insdorf to yell at me on Twitter, Max Melton is here if I want to get him to praise me on Twitter. <laughs> um, we got all sorts of options available to us. Uh, not a ton of centers, it looks like. We're looking at Van Pran and Mason McCormick who could potentially play center kind of down here in the 90s-ish. Um, so maybe we can wait one more round on that. I do think that we're going to just go Junior Colson here. Um, obviously, the Chargers brought Denzel Perriman back uh, earlier this week. Um, he's going to be one of your starters at linebacker, uh, probably. Uh, Dayon Henley kind of looks like he's going to step into a role as the other one. Um, but Perryman isn't going to be super great on pass downs. Um, and I think that Colson is kind of a nice foil to that if he's not going to start right away, um, whether over Henley or over Perryman. I think that he's kind of a nice foil to Perryman as a uh, as a coverage defender and someone that could blossom into a starting role um, sooner rather than later. Um, he is kind of like my favorite Michigan guy uh, of the group. I know a lot of people like Mike Sainer still. I love him too, but I think Colson is kind of my favorite one just from a fit perspective um, for how much draft capital it's going to cost. And so we're going to go with that um, and try to speed up a little bit as we uh, try to get through the rest of this <clears throat> day three uh, section here. Trey Benson still on the board, as is Marshawn Lloyd here at pick 105. Bo Limmer still here as well. Cade Stover down here. Uh, Jarvis Brownlee is a corner that I really like. Cole Bishop is still on the board. Cam Hart. Um, I think we're going to go Bo Limmer here. Um, he's kind of the one of the mid-round uh, options at center that you guys seem to have uh, picked up on, which I'm glad about because – uh, I think there's a lot of people that saw that clip of him getting run over by Tavondre Sweat at the Senior Bowl and said, like, wow, this guy sucks. But if you go back and you watch all of his other reps at the Senior Bowl, um, he won pretty much every single other one, including, like, a handful against Sweat. Um, it was just one bad rep that got clipped because it's a great rep for Sweat. And so, you know, like, you're you're trying to talk up one guy, and in doing so, you talk down on another guy, whether intentional or not. Um, but you know, there hasn't really been a, a whole lot of, uh, going in the other direction on Limmer. Um, but I really like him as a potential, uh, guy that could step in and, uh, be a long-term starter for you in the fourth round here. Um, did test very, very well. I believe his RAS was in like the nine eights, um, which is what you want out of a center. Um, but at the same time, benched like 30 something reps, I think 38, if I remember right. Um, so he's strong as hell. Um, which is going to be a huge point of emphasis for this Chargers team that wants to run run the ball. Um, and so I think that he is a great option to potentially sit behind Bradley Bozeman for a year, um, potentially even push him for a starting job. Um, if you want to kick Bozeman out to guard and have him compete with Jamari Sawyer at right guard, you could do that as well. Um, kind of gives you some more flexibility to get your best five out there uh, in week one to protect Justin Herbert. So I am going to go with that. Excuse me. Um, moving down to 110 here. It looks like the picks between us are three corners and Kate Stover. Um, so that's what we like to see. Um, Trey Benson still here. Marshawn Lloyd. Uh, Audric Estime as well is here. Um, I do think Malik Washington is here as well. Um, the Virginia receiver who I really like. Uh, Braylon Allen here as well. I do think we're going to go running back here. This is kind of the the area of the draft I expect them to address running back. Um, obviously, they signed Gus Edwards, um, who's going to be your 1A, 1B, depending on how high you take a running back. 
This is kind of where I expected them to take running back before they signed Edwards. This is also kind of still where I expect them to take running back because as you see, a lot of running backs are still on the board. And this is an extra fourth round pick. This is the pick that they get from the Keenan Allen trade um, to Chicago. And so they're two picks pretty close together in the fourth round. It's basically an extra pick. And so you can kind of do whatever you want with it. I do think that Lloyd makes a lot of sense. Obviously USC hired, uh, or sorry, the chargers hired USC's running back coach, uh, Keel McDonald, uh, this off season. Trey Benson is another guy that makes a lot of sense. I think ideally you're looking for someone that adds a little bit more in the receiving game, uh, to kind of complement what Edwards does well as kind of like a thumper, um, like goal line type back. So I think that kind of takes Estime and a guy like Braylon Allen out of contention for me. Um, those are two are guys that like haven't shown a ton in the passing game. Um, obviously Benson and Lloyd don't have like a ton of production in that area either. Um, but I think that Lloyd is the most complete back in the draft uh, in that sense um, from like a pass product, uh, pass protection plus receiving plus running ability plus the connection to USC's running backs coach. I still think that Marshawn Lloyd is a pretty good bet to end up in powder blue this fall. And so I'm going to take him here at 110. Moving down here to pick 140. We're now in the fifth round. Eric All still here. Jordan Travis, Isaac Garendo. Christian Boyd is still here, which I think is a crime. He just benched 38 reps at Northern Iowa's Pro Day yesterday. Kalen King is still here, a uh, favorite of the show. Roger Rosengarten is still here. That's actually interesting. Theo Johnson's still here. I think he's going to go a lot higher than this. He's kind of still... Um, sitting way, way down on PFF's board. We're not going to take him here because I don't think it's realistic um, as much as uh, I would like to add another tight end. Um, but let's see what else we got here. Xavier Thomas, Tyler Davis, Taj Washington is here. Um, let's see. I think... I think we're going to go with Taj Washington. We're going to go back to back USC players, uh, kind of keep the connection going with LA. I think that he steps in and he's your starter in the slot immediately. Um, and so you, now with the pick of Brian Thomas in round one, you're looking at a wide receiver trio of Brian Thomas Jr., Joshua Palmer, and Taj Washington, probably in three wide receiver sets with Quinton Johnson mixing in there. Um, obviously in, in ample opportunities as well. Um, he's someone that you can kind of flex around the formation. You can have him run as like a big slot at uh, at six listed six three there. Um, but I think Taj Washington is a very, very good player. Um, I think that people are going to uh, conflate his skill set a little bit with Darius Davis's. Um, Washington did return punts, I believe, a little bit in college, but he is a much better pure receiver than Darius Davis is. Um, so I'm going to take him here, double up on wide receiver. Like I said, I do think that they're going to make two picks there. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and we're going to uh, continue on. All right, pick 181. Eric All still on the board, as is Jaheim Bell, AJ Barner at tight end as well, Tip Ryman. Um, so this has kind of worked out perfectly for us because we still haven't taken a tight end, um, which we need to do. Um, obviously, Will Disley and Hayden Hurst have been brought in via free agency. I think both of those guys profile really well as secondary tight ends. Will Disley is going to be your blocking tight end. Hayden Hurst is kind of best used as like a tight end two receiving tight end threat. In the sixth round, though, you're not going to really get a tight end one necessarily. Um, but you can cobble together a tight end room with Disley, Hurst, and a sixth rounder for a year. And tight end is one of those positions where, like, you can get pretty minimal, like, you can get pretty maximal production from minimal investment. Um, obviously, you want an elite tight end because you want an elite player at every position. But tight end is also one of those where like you get a lot more players from like a wide range of the draft. Uh, the name that I'm focused on here is Ryman, because also um, if you follow Math Bomb on Twitter, uh, Kentley Platt, the one that does RAS, um, he has done studies before that have shown that tight end is one of the most uh, correlated positions to RAS um, in terms of production in the NFL. Tip Ryman's RAS was very, very close to 10. It's high nines. Um, and typically, tight ends that test that well are good players in the NFL. Ryman also turned a lot of heads at the combine with his blocking ability, um, like knocking that sled all over the place. 
Um, I think that he's an underrated receiver. I think that getting him in the sixth round would be a steal. I kind of don't really expect him to be available that low, um, but nobody has really been talking about him a lot higher than that. So I'm willing to consider it realistic. And I'm going to go ahead and draft him here. He probably steps in as tight end three to start the year. Um, but if he rises up the depth chart quickly, I would not be surprised whatsoever. Moving on to the two seventh round picks here as we get through the simulation. Joe Milton goes to the Dolphins, I saw there. Uh, Jalen Green, Omar Brown, Jalen Ford, Trey Taylor is here. Um, <clears throat> I do think that this is probably the territory where we're looking at uh, just taking some dart throws at players. Um, I do, let's see. I do like Dom Hampton. Obviously, I'm uh, biased as a Huskies guy. I've got my UW shirt on today. Um, but Hampton tested pretty well. He was someone that um, was pointed out by Daniel Jeremiah as a potential uh, standout at the Combine um, before Indianapolis went down. The Chargers still need kind of more depth at safety. Uh, Hampton can also come down and play nickel. So uh, just giving you kind of a versatile player there. Kind of think like a Mark Webb type, but without as much injury concern. Um, obviously, Webb's tenure with the Chargers kind of got hammered by injuries, um, but kind of a similar sort of player where, like, he can play nickel, he can play safety, he can come in and play in the box if you need him to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go there. And then moving on to our final pick, 253 here. Darius Moussa still on the board. That's pretty crazy. Uh, Khalid Duke still here. Eddie's still here. Uh, that's sick um i think we're gonna go let's see is there anyone i like down here all right we're gonna go with uh temple linebacker jordan mcgee um i think that he is getting severely underrated because of an injury that prevented him from working out at the combine um or at any of the all-star games um, but he's a player that I really like on tape, and I think that he could really turn into something. Um, I like him a bit better than some of these other linebackers that are a little bit higher on the board. Again, just adding some depth, he's probably going to come in and be a special teamer. Um, kind of think of him as like your Tanner Muse, Amen Ogbongwamiga replacement uh, in 2024 um, alongside Troy Dye um, with the potential to turn into like kind of a spot player like Nick Neiman has turned into um, as his career progresses. Um, so let's go there get through the rest here and let's see how pff grades this i'm sure they'll be very mean to me um, because they always are um wow pretty good a c for the dom hampton pick is kind of rude um but overall a b plus um so we get a b plus for the arnold pick uh a minus for thomas b for fisky uh a minus for colson and then down the line here an a for marshawn lloyd as well um so yeah so pretty decent uh i would say um with an overall grade of B plus. Um, again, I think that Arnold and Th Arnold Thomas, Fisky, Colson all step in as like day one starters for you. Uh, Limmer comes in as a developmental option at center. Probably doesn't start right away with Bozeman and Sawyer entrenched as starters, but could potentially start at center with Bozeman kicking over to guard. Lloyd is going to split time with Gus Edwards. Taj Washington comes in as your potential starter in the slot. Um, Ryman comes in as a tight end three that could rocket up the depth chart rather quickly. Hampton is kind of your Mark Webb type as like the versatile, like Swiss army knife in the secondary. Um, that's going to be an elite special teamer. And then McGee comes in as a special teams linebacker as well with the potential to blossom into even more. Um, so I think that that draft, uh, pretty much blends kind of the philosophy that I think the Chargers will be going for uh, in April here. I think that there's going to be uh, obviously a huge focus on getting starters at the top of the draft. Um, you saw that with the way that we approached it. Like I said, those first four picks are all going to start right away for me. Um, and I think that that's going to mirror the Chargers approach as well. They're, they need a lot of players. They just need people to populate the field. Um, and so I think that that's going to be a lot of what they target. And then down the board, we're still taking a lot of players where it's like, these guys aren't going to start right away necessarily, but because of their athletic traits or because of, you know, maybe some like arbitrages that we're taking on because of like injuries or, you know, other concerns, um, as to why they're kind of still available this late in the draft, like they might turn into starters and become valuable players for us. Like a Geno stone did in Baltimore from, um, for the Ravens, uh, when Joe Ortiz, uh, was a part of that regime picking him. 
Um, so that's going to do it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this mock draft. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about um, how an NFL team builds a draft board. I'm really excited for that one. Um, I have a lot of good insight that I want to uh, give to you guys about how that process goes. Uh, so make sure you, again, are subscribed to the channel. Keep an eye out. Uh, that episode is going to be coming out sometime next week. Uh, and as always, bolt up. See you.